Hi, DD Solar here. I'm out in my solar workshop. It's currently raining and gray, so there's very little solar power. All the lighting in this building currently is being provided by solar power and batteries. Now I am burning quite a lot of battery power right now to create the light for this camera, but oddly enough, there is one light that isn't burning any battery power at all, and I'm going to show you that light. This is a 30 watt LED flood lamp which is connected to a piece of speaker wire. You can see that in the ceiling there. That piece of speaker wire connects directly to two 100 watt solar panels that are outside. There is no battery and no charge controller in between. What I find fascinating about this is that even though it's dark outside and rainy and gray, there really is very little power on the solar panels. It's able to run this floodlight at a very good brightness and I'm able to see what I'm doing and do my work. LEDs don't require a lot of power to make quite a bit of light. Solar panels certainly don't capture all the sunlight or all the radiation in terms of electricity, but you more than make up for it on the other side by using an LED light. So you get quite a bit of light, quite a bit more than you might expect. There you can see the voltage on this orange voltmeter right here. And that's the two 100 watt solar panels that are running that LED floodlight. Now granted it's pulled the voltage of those panels down to 9 volts, but it's still putting out a ton of light. On the right hand side of the picture you can see this connector right here where I'm putting my hand and that's actually what's feeding the light. It's coming straight off a fuse which is coming straight off the solar panel. Again there's no battery or charge controller it's just running straight solar. At the same time it's also running this little tiny LED tree I bought. I'm guessing that uses less than half a watt but it still lights it up. It's also running this LED power board which is right here. It's got four channels into which that tree is plugged into. It's also running that meter on the left, but unfortunately there isn't enough power to charge this portable power system here. But it's interesting that even in the dark the solar panels produce enough power to be still useful and especially in terms of generating light. It's a little bit hard to see here, but this is my miniature off-grid battery bank. This is a old lithium iron phosphate battery I have. This is a Make Sky Blue MPPT charge controller I have. And I installed these items recently to power the solar workshop. Right now there is no way to see the voltage or status of the battery at a glance. I can use this battery computer here, but that may not be connected. I could look on the charge controller, but the voltage display on there is extremely inaccurate and cannot be relied on. The solution is to install an accurate digital voltmeter dedicated to this battery so I can see at a glance what its current state of charge is or at least relatively. But not just any digital voltmeter. I consider my lithium iron phosphate battery pack to be pretty much empty at 12.8 volts and I consider it to be full at 13.6 volts. That doesn't give me a lot of variation. In fact it's only giving me a total of 0.8 volts between empty and full. Zero point eight volts isn't very much. A normal digital voltmeter, a cheap one, probably would display the voltage in three digits, so it would probably say something like twelve point eight volts. And that would be three digits. A better digital voltmeter might say twelve point 85 volts because it has four digits to display the voltage with. What's the difference between these two voltmeters? Well, since you aren't working with very much voltage difference in the first place, you need a voltmeter with a higher resolution. Ideally, the voltmeter would have more digits to display the voltage with, and the reason is very simple. A voltmeter that displays the voltage with one digit after the decimal place isn't going to show you very much change going from 12.8 volts to 13.6 volts. It'll hardly move at all. But a voltmeter that has an additional digit after the decimal place, so in this case the one on the right, is a little bit better because for this digit to move one time, let's say it goes from 8 to a 9, this digit here has to move 10 times. So for the 8 here to change over to a 9, this digit here would have to go from 0 through 9 and then it would go back to 0 again and then this digit here would change to 9. 
So you're getting a lot more information on the display than you otherwise would with a voltmeter that only has one digit after the decimal place. But I found that even that isn't enough. Usually the voltmeters that have two digits aren't necessarily that accurate and they can be quite a pain to calibrate. So just because I have an additional digit doesn't necessarily mean I have what I need. What I really need is an accurate, precise voltmeter that I don't have to worry about calibrating myself. I want it to be accurate out of the box. And I actually want a third digit after the decimal place. So that's what it would look like. A voltmeter with three digits after the decimal place is actually able to read the voltage of the battery pack in the millivolt range. A millivolt is a volt divided into 1,000 parts, if you want to look at it that way. When you divide one volt into 1,000 millivolts, now you get to see a lot of change. Even if it's a small change, the display will move quite a lot. So to try to make it as simple as I can, this digit here is going to move more than this digit, and this digit here is going to move more than that digit. This digit here won't change very much. This one will change a lot more, and this one will really change a lot. This digit here has to change 10 times for this digit to change one time. And that continues as you move towards the decimal place. So this last digit here, this third digit, this is key to understanding what the battery's doing. Let's say the battery's charging at only one amp. If you had a one digit voltmeter, you're almost never going to see a change or a difference here. If you have a two digit voltmeter, you might see some change, but a one amp current is unlikely to make that much of a difference. Lithium iron phosphate batteries usually have low internal resistance and are known for being able to take a charge while showing very little difference or rise in their voltage as they charge. That makes them very useful but it also makes it very hard to track the voltage. When the voltmeter is able to measure down to one millivolt, it's far easier to gauge what the battery is doing. If you charge at one amp on a relatively large battery, you are eventually going to see at least one or two changes right here on the third number. So this voltmeter with three digits is much more sensitive to changes. It can gauge a very tiny change in the voltage of the battery pack. And in this way, you can actually tell whether the battery is charging or discharging much more easily. If you have a one amp charge coming in and you're running a one amp light bulb, you might wonder, is the battery slightly discharging or is it slightly charging or is there no change? When you have a millivolt voltmeter, it's far easier to make that call. Eventually, this third digit is going to tell you whether the battery is creeping up in voltage or creeping down because it's extremely sensitive to changes in the voltage. So the type of voltmeter I need is this kind here that reads in three places after the decimal. So if we go up here, 12.8 volts, 13.6 volts, 0 0.8 volts. So I only have 0 0.8 volts to work with. With a millivolt voltmeter, this side of the display on this side of the decimal place has to change 800 times to represent 0 0.8 volts. So that's 800 millivolts. 0 0.8 volts is 800 millivolts. And that's usually how it's written. So 800 millivolts is equal to 0 0.8 of a volt. 1000 millivolts is one volt. Here is the voltmeter I purchased for this project. As you can see, it has quite a few digits. This voltmeter is able to read a 12 volt battery pack with three places after the decimal. Usually a type of voltmeter that's very precise will have a dedicated power supply. In this case, this voltmeter has a negative or ground and it has a red or positive wire and that's just to power the voltmeter. The sense lead is this yellow wire right here and this is what you measure with with reference to ground. I like this particular voltmeter because you have the option of bonding the red and yellow wire. That means you don't need a separate power supply. So I have the option of using a separate dedicated power supply or just using the battery itself to power this voltmeter. Now that could affect its accuracy, but with a meter like this that's well calibrated, it should not be a problem. I'm going to use relatively short wires to connect this voltmeter. 
so I don't think powering it from the battery I'm measuring will be an issue. I'm going to test this voltmeter by attaching it to a lithium iron phosphate battery I have here. This is a small one. I'll just use some alligator clips. Positive and negative. Connect the positive and the negative. And you can see that it lights up the display. And it's only showing zero, so in order to get a measurement other than zero, I have to connect the yellow wire to the source that I'm measuring. I'm going to be powering the voltmeter from the same battery I'm measuring, so I might as well go ahead and hook it up that way. So I have to connect both the red and yellow wire to the battery's positive. And there's the voltage, 13.294. So a cheaper voltmeter would say 13.2 or it might say 13.3 by rounding the 9 up into the 2 and making that a 3. And if you have a 2 digit voltmeter it shows the voltage to 2 digits, it would probably just say 13.29. But this voltmeter is showing it to 3 decimal places which means it will be very very sensitive and it will record very small changes in the battery voltage which is what I want. To mount the voltmeter to my power board, I'm going to use a piece of this plastic screen track. I have quite a lot of scraps laying around, and I found my voltmeters will either snap into or hang off of this track. For now, I'll we'll probably just use some alligator clips on the ends of the wires to attach it to the battery. That's the fastest way to get up and running, and it allows me to make changes later if I need to. Now I go ahead and put some wires on this voltmeter. I'm going to use these alligator clips that I cut off because it's the quickest way I have to get up and running. I just tin the wires. I'm going to add some heat shrink just to be safe. Back over at the power board, I'm going to go ahead and install the voltmeter.
Now I'll go ahead and connect the voltmeter. And I'm using alligator clips right now because that's the easiest way for me to get up and running. In case I change my mind later or, or I want to make changes. The alligator clip is the most convenient way to give this voltmeter a try. You can always change it out later. The charge controller says 13.3 volts at 0 0.6 amps. But the precision voltmeter says 13.262 volts. That's a huge difference. And as you can see, that third digit is already changing. It's going back and forth between 1 and 2. And that's because the charge controller is a DC-DC converter. It has ripple and it has line noise. And it's charging the battery. But there's some slight variations in the voltage. And this voltmeter is so sensitive that it's able to pick those up. And it's very, very easy now to see what the battery's doing. This particular charge controller in low light conditions tends to hunt around a lot for the maximum power point and as a result the amount of current going into the battery varies quite a lot. There is very little solar power to be had right now. I'm now getting 0 0.3 amps from the charge controller and you can see that the last digit continues to change and go back and forth. It's now down to 13.257 volts. The charge controller now reads 0 0.2 amps into the battery and as expected the voltage on this battery is starting to slightly fall. Without a three digit voltmeter I would be unaware of these changes that are taking place. I tried to zoom in using digital zoom and you can see the charge controller is feeding in about 0.2 of an amp. Earlier it was feeding in about 0.6 amps or 600 milliamps and the voltage was slightly higher on the voltmeter. It's actually fallen to 13.252 volts because the charge controller isn't putting very much power into the battery anymore and the voltage started to creep down. This type of information is incredibly useful and having three digits allows you to see the battery's behavior in near real time. Right now I expect the voltage of the battery pack to slowly creep downward because it's getting almost no charge at all and the charge controller itself consumes a certain amount of power. So at this point the battery is either slightly discharging or it's barely charging at all. All I have to do is see if the voltage creeps up or down and I'll know whether it's being charged up or it's being discharged. Right now the voltage has fallen to 13.251 volts. If I had a two digit voltmeter I probably would not be aware that it was changing very much at all. In conclusion a single or double digit voltmeter is really not well suited to monitoring a lithium ion battery pack. Lithium ion batteries have a very flat charge and discharge curve which means not very much change in the voltage throughout the entire charge and discharge of the battery pack. For this reason single digit and double digit voltmeters are really not suitable for monitoring these kinds of batteries especially if it's a house battery or a storage system for off-grid use. But a three digit voltmeter is just the ticket because it's far more sensitive and it shows far more information on the display than a single or double digit voltmeter could show. I hope this video was useful or helped someone. Thanks for watching and see you later.